small town about 120 miles west of Chicago. It's an old pharmacy, about 100 years old. The lady that owns it said a lot of things happen here that she really can't explain to both herself and her children. In this room, she was recently just pushed, a physical push, the candy jars that are upstairs. The lids come flying off in the middle of the night when nobody's in. Chicago Paranormal Group will be here in about four hours with their camera work, their EVPs, all their equipment. We're going to find out who's here and why they're here. All right, so tell me what's going on here. Okay, we well, started about three years ago, and as we started renovating the store, we started having some weird things happen. We, there was a bell that used to be in the back pharmacy, and it would ring and ring and ring, and nobody would be back at the pharmacy. We took the bell, put the bell above the soda fountain, so no one would be able to touch it. Well, the bell still rang in the back pharmacy. The clock used to gong by itself, okay. always at um, five o'clock. Five o'clock. Used to gong at five o'clock. It's not wound up or it's anything? It's never wound. Yeah. And then the candy lids would fly off on their own. Now when you closed though, I think you told me when you closed, the lids were all on the candy. Right. Did they ever fly off when you were yes, here? Yes, they have flown off while we watched them. Okay. One of the customers went to reach and grab the lid, but the lid flew off as, it, as they went to reach. What did they do? They freaked out. Did they run out? No, they yeah. would never anything run out. I had one woman tell me that she couldn't go into the last aisle because she couldn't breathe. We've also had whistles. Like whistle like what? Kind of like someone whistling at you. Yeah. Where did it happen to you at? In the bathroom. Because that's what happened to you in the bathroom downstairs. Yeah. So what we're going to do is uh, Roy Baggio's coming here okay. with uh, his Chicago Paranormal Research Group. So if there's anything here at all, they're going to find it. This is the, the old pharmacist's office. He oh, used, okay. He spent a lot of time down here. Now, is it the first time you've experienced anything down here that's, in no, this room? No, I used to have my shop right over here. Okay. And I had some kids helping me straighten up. They were on the other side. And I got pushed, like, right on the, the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I thought they had actually thrown something at me. And I said, what are you guys doing? Who hit me in the butt? That's what I said. And they were all the way over there. They're like, ew, we're not good, to, you know. Right. And, um, but I was definitely pushed right in here. Yeah. And what's this is the, the old pharmacist's office. He's, oh, okay. He spent a lot of time down here. Now, is it the first time you've experienced anything down here That's, in no, this room? I was doing paperwork one time, and I kept getting a breeze across the back of my neck. And I just said, Steve, leave me alone. i got lots to do. And it stopped. Now, Steve is who? Steve is the, the deceased pharmacist. Okay. Yeah. And it stopped. And it stopped. Right. Yeah. Hi, my name is Jan Mead. This is our thermal imaging camera. It's used to detect heat and cold and any presence of energy in a room. This, one, this unit right here, we can hook up up to 16 cameras and uh, simultaneously uh, live record all the cameras on a hard drive here and then play it back later. Uh, so we, and then it puts a timestamp on each frame. Uh, in addition to that, we can also stop it, pause it, go forward, reverse, and uh, pretty much use it like a computer and actually look at some of the live footage. So you got one, two, three, four cameras and one more is going on? Five and then another one. We're going to have six. Okay. There goes the fifth. Hi, I'm Mike Danster. Uh, this is my box of toys. Digital camcorder with night shot, uh, EMF detector, uh, digital camera. This right here is an uh, infrared illuminator. Uh, this will actually let up up to about 400 feet in total darkness. And what's nice with this unit here, we can literally let it light up uh, almost like a, a size of a basketball court. My name is Steve Dancy, and this is my first time, my first visit here. And I'm the curator for the Mendota Museums. I'm also retired from the Illinois State Police. And I'm here tonight just to see if I could experience anything or if something might happen here. So I guess I'm more curious than anything else. What I think is strange is I'm not a psychic by any means, but when I first walked into this room, it's this feeling of this pressure. And even as I'm standing here now, it, it just feels like there's someone or something that's pushing against my chest. And it's real uncomfortable for me to just to even be in this room. I, I kind of feel like I don't want to be here. I want to go somewhere else because it's, it's an uncomfortable feeling for me. I'm Donna Boonstra. I'm with CPR. And what I'm going to do is, as soon as Roy gets all the cameras set up, then I'm going to walk around and kind of give you my impressions of what I'm feeling. Sometimes it's physical feelings. Maybe I'll start having knee pain, something like that. I start feeling energy. 
I get it, feelings in my hand. My hands go numb. They start feeling like um, pinpricks. Also, smell different scents. Um, if there's smoke, if there's fire, sometimes that'll come across. Flowers, perfume, cigars. Um, so I'm just going to kind of walk around and give you my impressions. Well, Donna's going downstairs right now, and she's going to basically be going in counterclockwise. She's going to be going from the um, the left side of the basement. She's going to see if she can feel anything there. Go then into the bathroom then cross over and go into the right side of the basement and then go into the workroom. But in each one, she's going to see if she can detect anything with her sensitivity. Um, and then Jan, with the thermal imager, using the scientific method, is going to see if she sees anything bizarre as far as any temperature drops or anything like that. Okay. You want to just do kind of a general overview first? Probably first. Yeah, you know what, I'm going to get can... right behind you, but I'm going to okay. get her to step there. into something? Right, like I got stuck onto a wall, but it's like something was blocking. Are you just touching the sink? No. Okay, because I got some, I got some energy around it. Mm -hmm. So I step back, walk back in, Clear, but I still feel something even now. You could just walk around and then double back, and because I kind of like to get a feel for the whole area. Right, yeah, right here. Yeah. But it's moving. I feel um, energy is swirling, and now I feel it up through my shoulder and into my neck. 